Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Adobe campaign. We picked things up for episode 9 from turn 75 in the summer season of 205. And if we take a look at the map, we are in control of the south. We are trying to pick up the remaining pieces of Wuling. That's going to be our most important goal. And our armies just wiped out, you know, uh, part of Wuling here in the Toolmaker. We got a few level up going to get the fire arrows on those E archers and we're going to pick up flexibility to get 5% more healing on this army. Do we have a better follower for him now? Yes we do. So we're going to use a bodyguard. That will give us some melee evasion on these frontline units. They have very low melee evasion actually. Only 7% before this boost. Uh, not the best melee unit but definitely the best shield against cavalry and range which is basically what we need them for. We probably have a good horse for him. Hmm. There are all these set bonuses with those that I don't want to give. So I guess we'll just give him a bit more health with a regular brown stallion. And in terms of this, I'm trying to stay away from most of the newly added TUP items. Especially on historical generals. Hmm, I think the rooster is fine. All right, they're going to proceed on. Well, this is really there's a cloud floating through this area right now. Uh, we're going to go take this path over here. We'll find Shamoko's army somewhere here and we'll sweep across, take Badung first before moving over here uh, to Wuling. Meanwhile, we need one more turn of siege to finish that before we can take it. I don't know if they will send any armies to stop us. Uh, Meng Huo's army kind of disappeared. I would assume they recalled. If they are hiding somewhere, that would be pretty amazing. Uh, but we're not worried. We got this burn officer debuffing any range, and we trust the three brothers at all times. Looking at what we can build, we're not going to build anything in Donghai anymore. But Jiangxia, Lingling are all places of major construction for us. Um, the rest, we'll keep it at where it is because we're basically reform locked. We are bleeding income. But thankfully we have a nice supply we have a satisfaction issue or we still have a satisfaction issue this will fix itself very soon actually it'll be 26 next turn me Feng ranked up which is now causing a bit of issue perhaps we can provide him with some sort of range relevant boost poison arrow as an alternative Hmm, very pricey. We already have fire arrows and we're fighting a lot of Nama units, so fire would be the way to go. Range damage. We'll give him general of the standard. And we can give him some gear. Let's see, we don't have these sets. This one has no set. Oh, we can also give him one of the Heavenly Sword, which automatically will increase satisfaction. But since we're ready to give him a title, I think we'll just go with Warblade. We'll hang on to these, and we'll give him this one for now. We don't have a regular Grey Stallion. Some extra damage for him? Sure, why not? We don't have that many armies on the field, so it's fine. He actually could use some cunning because he's running an archer comp. And finally over here, this will actually complement him quite well with the expertise plus the cunning. The diviner bonus, Guan Yu has the diviner right now. I don't think we need to pass that one on. And speaking of the diviner, Guan Yu probably doesn't need this anymore. Mm, but I don't technically have a good replacement item. I could also pass on the guard to pass four points of satisfaction to someone who might need it. Yeah, yeah. In my faction, but complaining. Lack of purpose. He's going to dip six more points. Just a bit unfortunate. Just because he's kind of high level as well. And we don't have an error. We don't have a nice court set up. So this four points not going to make a difference on him. That's the thing. He's going to dip more points. 
So I might as well not bother with him. Yeah, it's fine. He'll bleed some unity for us. Alright, all this is good. Looking at our spies, we did pick him up. We're waiting for the spring. We Okay, we did get the fourth spy. Right. So that's pretty much it for our spy activities. There's not much we can do uh, beyond what we have set up over here. Moving forward, we might go back to picking up bread reform, especially campaign movement bonuses on these two. A bit different how we usually approach reform trees because we have a very easy economy building to rely on with our faction unique building so we can kind of break a lot of the rules i feel like they can just wait for points at this stage there's no put we're waiting for using to come back right we need to see an empty slot before we can utilize it so this is good let's continue okay they pieced out and they pieced out at the same time they're in the same coalition and we get xu shu you hear a man seeing of waiting for a noble lord in the town, dressed humbly in hempen robes and a turban, he reveals himself to be a great strategist. He is neither fledgling phoenix nor sleeping dragon. However, but nevertheless, still a man of talent. So this is technically Liu Bei's first strategist that he picks up. And Xu Shu is the reformed vigilante, because at a young age he was a vigilante swordsman. Later on picked up a book and became a strategist. Academic swordsman set. Hello? Okay, so I think in this case what we want to do is like... Hmm, still not picking it up. It's saying it's not owned, but it's right here. With the same set. Uh, maybe the bonuses are applied. We can check the military tab. I am getting a small boost on damage. So I think it is applied to us, right? The melee attack rate, it's boosted. The armor piercing damage. I see a little tab right here. This tab is from the instinct, I think. Oh, but there's 5% on this. All right, it's fine. It doesn't matter if it's on or not. I might take away his sword because if you guys are familiar with the novel, he's going to leave us very soon. We'll talk about why he leaves when that time comes. We'll put him on the bench for now. Obviously a great general. He does not have a unique skill, however. This art is done by CA. It's an official art. Not many people get to see him because he only shows up when you play as Liu Bei. We'll give him an excellent skill tree, because there is a chance he comes back to us. Uh, we'll explain why a bit later. I actually want to level him up if we can. That's going to help us get him back. But he does have this minus 50% desire, uh, but hopefully we can make him high enough level that he can kind of overcome that. I already have the boost here. Maybe in uh, Jiangxia? No, Nan's gonna have the extra commerce. So I guess we wait for a turn before. We only have one real city here. I guess Donghai would also count. Fine, here you go. Go to Donghai, help us boost. We have an incentive to see him rank up. Wait, there he is. Perfect. We also got most of Liu Bao's court to ditch him, and they all came to me. Liu Min, the youngest daughter. Liu Ping Min, the middle daughter, I guess, the oldest daughter. Random officer. Kuai Yue's brother, Bai Liang. Uh, less famous than Kuai Yue. Tactory, tactical theory. Effective range, but only 10 second duration, like that boosts, I mean, every 25 second cooldown, but just feels like you have to keep spamming that. I guess we'll pick him up. Sun Guan, self-sacrifice. We've seen him already. He's not from Nobel's faction. He is picked up from Nobel's faction, but he's not a Han Chinese name. Uh, Xian Yu Ying, definitely a Xian Bei name, but 
I am not familiar with most Zenbei characters. Picked up a unique skill from this. The bonus is morale. Very weak bonus. We gotta check everyone's item. We've been pretty strict with who we recruit, mainly because we're not rich. If I had, you know, 10k income per turn, I'll grab all of them. Wow. You're definitely the spoiled daughter. And we've been keeping people's family. I mean, time all ditched us. He doesn't have a... Oh, his past loyalty is very shaky. We can't recruit him. He's a spy from Sun Ce. He ditched Liu Bao, went to Sun Ce, and now he's being sent as a spy towards us. Okay. We'll basically take in the daughters. We can technically adopt them. Si Liang Vanguard unlocks heavy Si Liang Cavalry. Who from the Si Liang factions marry into their family to get the item? It's very interesting. The White Fan, advisor of purity, ancient truth. Ancient truth? Wait, that sounds... Why does that sound familiar? But anyways, plus 15% range damage, not bad. We'll hang on to that as well. We can arrange a few marriages for them down the line. We could even adopt them. I think adopting them as our daughter would make some sense. We could definitely consider that. But that doesn't have to happen now. Because I have no control over whether Liu Bao marries into Sun Ce's family tree. And if we adopt them, then we could have a distant relative situation with um, Sun Ren when she comes of age. So we can't really afford that situation. Therefore, we must be very careful uh, just by keeping ourselves single for as long as possible to make sure that marriage gets locked in. There's no replenishment issues. I'm not really scared of any armies. So I'm going to march over. This we can simply resolve with... I'm going to delegate this. We do have army landing over there. Massive casualties, mostly on the militia units. Very normal. They landed on Sun Ce's side. I mean, it's still close to us, but perhaps since he's at war with Sun Ce as well, Maybe the AI actually are not going to tunnel vision us this time. At least we can hope for that. And then this army will rest up for a turn here and move on to Badong. Doesn't feel like Ahui Nan is going to be difficult to kill. And then they will hunt them down. And then we'll try to make a deal for this land. I wonder if it's tradable right now. It is. 31. Pricey. Definitely pricey. We can do 15 from cash, but he's probably pretty rich, so he's going to demand a lot of money. And then 15 from items. Um, not ideal. We could also fight them, but uh, the marriage needs to come first, turn 87, so a few turns there. Empty slot. Liu Yao, Huang Zhong. The five tiger generals. We're just missing Ma Chao. Wang Yun, I think we're still interested in. But if you look at the faction now, there's really not anyone left, right? We have Huang Zhu's daughter, who's our spy. We have his wife, who's our spy. We have his son, who's our spy. And we have Huang Zhong. Zheng Jiang is probably the only one we're interested in right now. So the question is, who can... So let's get... These people to discredit faction for us because they haven't done so. And then we'll try to hit Zheng Jiang with a minus um, 30 by herself once we do get that chance. She's on, right, she's at, so she'll be at 15. Right. And I think some of them might actually drop to zero now. So they will come back to us and they will open up a slot. So Huang Zhong is also zero. 
Neutron's always also zero. Lady Tide's also zero. So we'll see what he does in terms of maintaining them. If he doesn't maintain them, we, we take them back. And then we'll see if we can grab Zhengjiang here. All right, perfect. Uh, what's going on in our faction? Right, we brought back a character with a minus 10, which is why all of a sudden we have minus 10 as well. The discredit faction is being applied to our faction right now. Could be, it's probably one of them. One of the daughters. Um, we could just take it and lose unity, basically. Because it'll go away. But it's pretty dangerous, actually. Hmm, this is a bit rough. I don't want to give them titles, but there's no real easy way to deal with this. Hmm, I think we just have to take it and hope it goes away soon. All right, we picked up none. Get rid of the temple, get rid of the building here. That, I think, we will switch to the income base one. And we'll put a tax collection in and a state workshop for now. We would like to upgrade in the future, but that's obviously not happening right now. I could also see if I have another character who could do the plus 10 satisfaction here. So let's cancel that first. Because that can stack. So the rule help us. That can balance it out a little bit. All right. That's going to be the game plan for now. Let's continue. Nenshaw wants the guard. The guard's actually good. It's the only item that's a follower that gives satisfaction. We have ourselves a civil war. So, Shushu's mother. Shushu asked for a meeting and arrived, arrives looking distressed. My lord, though I know you still have need of me it seems fate has other plans my mother has sent an urgent message to meet with her and i must leave immediately so it's a trap or follow the story or follow history and oh actually it's actually not history this is romance we'll talk about this very soon we let him leave we took his sword so it's fine he can go and we get a relationship between us and he's going to pick up a unique trait in the game he's going to join Tall Tall's faction and his trait um, it's going to be called Heartbroken. He's the only person with that trait, and it's going to drop his satisfaction, which means it's very likely he ends up leaving Tall Tall's faction, and he will probably show back up in our recruitment pool and we can grab him. Hopefully that's the case. If not, we'll try to use some spies to get that to happen. Uh, but historically speaking, wow, well, first off, Lu Bu's army is nearby. Xu Rong, Shield of the West. They gave him a cool title. Very talented general. Um, Zhang Liao. Uh, so yeah, back to our story here. What happened historically is that we were in Xinye. Cao Cao's army are coming. We are fleeing back to Xiangyang. But just as we get here, we learn that Liu Bao has already died of old age. Liu Chong has taken over. And under uh, Liu Chong's I guess mom, quote unquote mom, not birth mom, but Lady Tai. Uh, and the Tai clan's decision is to surrender to Cao Cao, and they did. So Liu Bei is forced to continue to flee south towards Jiangxia uh, to get sheltered by Liu Qi, Liu Chong's older brother, uh, who's willing to stand with Liu Bei to resist Cao Cao and enter into an alliance with Sun Quan, because Sun Ce should be dead, but the assassination event never triggered in this one, so Sun Ce is still alive, um, and at this point is where all the refugees kind of joined in, because a lot of locals in this area, Liu Bei is very popular. Uh, when Liu Bei first came in and took over Xinye, very small town, right away, a lot of the local gentry clans who worked under Liu Bei's court went to visit Liu Bei and kind of befriended him, and that alerted Liu Bei a bit. Now, Liu Bei didn't suspect Liu Bei of anything, and actually kind of suggest in history that Liu Bei should actually be the one taking over because he felt Liu Bei had more talent and more calling than his sons. 
Um, but obviously the Thai clan had other plans. Uh, but Nobe had a really good draw with the local population as well as the clans that were powerful. So both among the lower class and the high class within the Jin province uh, really saw Nobe as the leader who could help them. And when Nobe was on the run, a lot of these local populations decided to run with him. And Cao Cao's army coming in, have to take over all the administrative duty, uh, wasn't able to give full pursuit. Uh, the infantry obviously would be slower, but he sent the famed tiger and leopards under Cao Chun to give chase. And the army caught up to this refugee army, which is going to be really, really slow, uh, fairly soon before they made it to Jiangxia. And that's where you have the famous battle like Changban, where Zhao Yun saves the kid, Zhang Fei roars on the bridge, and Xia Hojie dies. Um, those are all romance based, but Zhao Yun saving the kid is pretty historical. And his historical achievement there is probably uh, not as crazy as in the books where he kills like 40 generals and comes back with the kid. But in history, he goes back in into the chaos of the war, comes back with the kid and the wife. Lady Gan didn't suicide. That's added in in romance. Lady Gan survives this battle. And that was Zhao Yun's job. Zhao Yun was a, a, not a general, quote unquote, at this point. He was basically Liu Bei's head of security, right? But that's not a bad job. Like Xu Chu also had that job for Cao Cao. Uh, that's an important job, right? And he was in charge of taking care of all the families when they were evacuating. And when the cavalry came in, all the families got lost. And one of the family members that got lost and captured was Xu Shu's mom. Right? It's not the story where Cao Cao wrote a letter, tricked the mom to come into their capital, forced her to write a letter to the son to trick the son to go back. That's not the case. The mom got captured during the escape. And because of filial piety, uh, you know, the idea that you had to take care of your parents, and she was the only parent that Xu Shu had at the time. The father died a while ago. So Xu Shu felt like he could not abandon her. So he asked Liu Bei, if it's okay if he leaves uh, and go to Tal Tal so that he can take care of his mom. And Liu Bei let him go. Uh, you know, uh, it's very uh, nice of him in a way. And I think that's actions like this uh, kind of reinforce how Liu Bei had so much support among everyone because he made these decisions that were obviously not entirely great for him because Xu Shu was one of the few strategists he actually had. Uh, who was actually educated in, you know, war manuals, knew how to organize armies. I mean, a lot of the facts of organizing armies are things like, you know, how to deal with logistics, how to train your army, how to have supplies, how to make encampments. These are things that, you know, you know, people just don't learn when they're growing up in a non-wartime state. Um, so he had to let him go. And Xu Shu went to Cao Cao. And it was not the crazy thing where Xu Shu promised that he will never provide any uh, advice for Cao Cao as long as he lived, then obviously Cao Cao would not use him. He became a very minor court official, and he was not very ambitious while working for Cao Cao, let's just say that. And he stayed in a pretty low position uh, to the point where when Zhuge Liang was starting his northern expedition, he started getting more news of Cao Wei's court. And then he realized that many of his friends well, Zhuge Liang lived in this area. Xu Shu was a close friend to Zhuge Liang, who had stayed behind and now works for Cao Cao, are still in very low positions in the government. And it made Zhuge Liang lament and kind of think that, is it because that Cao Cao had, or at that time maybe Cao Pi, had so much talent that people that he thought very highly of could not compete and get a good job? Right, he was kind of thinking um, there's obviously a lack of talent within the Shu court in terms of officials and generals and so forth. And um, those are just a couple points there. So that's the historical version of what happened with Xu Shu. And he did leave and he did eventually just work under Cao Cao's court for the rest of his life, uh, not as a very high official. Um, eventually, I think his final position was kind of a court etiquette official. So basically, when the officials come to court every day, there are rules and etiquettes in terms of how that procession goes. He's in charge of making sure everyone uh, follows the traditions and stay within the etiquette. That was his job. Not a very high, uh, important position for sure. Anyhow, 
We will try to get him back though. Um, in Liu Bei's eyes, he's definitely worth it. And him leaving also led to Liu Bei seeking out Zhuge Liang, because um, Zhu Shu basically recommended Zhuge Liang to Liu Bei at the end because they were close friends. All right, with all that said, the civil war is kind of interesting because Huang Zhong stayed with <laughs> Liu Biao. Lady Tai stayed with Liu Biao. The sun ditched, right? The sun ditched, and Huang Anbao stayed. So only the sun ditched, which means Zheng Jiang is with him. I wonder if this 40 is... It looks like the 40 is mainly from discredit faction. Or else, how are they negative 50? I'm a little confused here. I'm going to just test this out. There's a plus 2 here we're going to watch out for. No. The negative 40 includes... Right, getting Zheng Jiang just got a little harder. Because we don't have that many spies within this faction. This faction, I feel like we can just ask them all to ditch. If we ask the three of them to go, then Liu Bao's by himself. Right? If Liu Bao gets wiped out by his son, he probably comes to us. That's also really good. Um, so now it's just extraction time. There is still distrust? No. So there is the plus 12 we gotta worry about. The other thing is... They don't have any recent... Oh, they do. So I might want to wait that out. I can't get hit with another minus 10 in my faction. So we're probably going to wait that out. We're probably going to do things like empower... Let's do interference first. And then empower trade. Um, we can do improve relations because they're family members. She can also do improve relations when she gets some more points. Shift some points over, get another turn, power trade. It's five turns per pop. We can stack a bunch of these for now. There we go. And we can enjoy 35 turns of 25% in power trade. And hopefully we'll get, I mean, they're all gonna ditch. And then he's gonna be alone without and he wants to protect his land, so hopefully they take it. Because she's going to ditch too. We might not want to go back because the bulls here. Let me see if I can bait him back. That's going to be a bait right here. It's hard to catch up to him. We could go take this first, but there's not a lot of reward to take a farmland. I feel like we should still try to go after him. Or maybe start cutting him off? We could also just go to this intersection here. And also ambush to see, which, so no matter which way he moves, we can kind of be prepared to hit him. And he's not really a threat with this much force. Yeah, I think that's the plan. I mean, he's technically gone, just not refreshed it. Wait, interesting. There's still negative. Did we not end turn yet? No, it's activated. I have plus 20, yet, yet still this bad. That's quite concerning. I mean, yeah, because he was at 10 point last turn. Should have dropped to minus two from character. One of them is the skill of don't pay shunt. I don't have another army slot to summon them out. That's the problem. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if we can get a reform to help them out next turn. Oh, that can actually cancel and reset because these won't finish in time. Don't hide, we're not touching. Okay, we'll just tough it out and see if we can bait him into a fight. Perfect. I've been waiting for him to apply some pressure to us. 
So we can have the, you know, technical trippy situation starting now. And we're never going to peace out with him going forward because basically we're in conflict forever. Um, what we can do, well, actually, there's no good solution. We're going to get scheme for the rest of the game. That's just something we have to take um, until we settled ourselves in Shu. And then we launched the Hanzhong offense. And then we launched the Guan Yu Jin offense, Jin Zhou offense. And at that point, We'll break away from history because we're not playing to a defeat, obviously. Um, we're going to have a pincer movement and play out Zhuge Liang's original plan on how to take down Cao Cao. But now we have to suffer for the next 50 turns, maybe. And Cao Cao's army is ready in position. What do you know? He added Dou Fu. Okay. Same army he had in the beginning. Nothing really changed. He can have it. Liu Bei's army is on this side, so we can go and resist him. Quality obviously went up. Shi Xie is willing to give us a non-aggression. It's very generous of him. We never really go to war with him historically. He's always very peaceful, but he did play politics on both sides. And he heavily favored uh, Sun Qian's regime over ours. He actually instigated the Nanman Rebellion in history. That's fine. Alright, Cao Cao declare war on us. Jiang Xia is lost. The Chi of Wu. Wait, 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 wait. Are, are you guys buddies? He picked. Okay, hold on. He picked up Heartbroken, which is a trait, minus 15 satisfaction. So that's our advantage there. It's the only person in the game with this trait. Got an inspector. Yupan comes back, not interested. What, what? Oh no. What kind of alliance is this? You're supposed to be with us. I mean, it's not ahistorical. When Sun Tzu was alive, he was in a quote-unquote half-hearted alliance with Cao Cao. But now we, we might get a problem where Cao Cao asks him to join the war against us, right? Before the marriage. If it's after the marriage, I wouldn't care. But right now we're before the marriage. Alright, Lu Bu's forces are just, just not coming down, so I guess I don't really care. Are they actually fighting each other? You guys still have the minus 10? Yeah, it's still on. See, I don't know who's applying yet. That's the thing. So I don't know who I can call back, who I can't call back. That's the big thing. It's only plus two. I don't really need to do interference for just plus two. We just gotta be mindful that it's plus two. Actually, I, I think it's safe to call Huang Zhong back. I don't think I ever hit him with... Yeah, I don't think I ever hit him with... Um, I'm gonna help... Actually, we don't need to build any points. Um, anything to use that point? I guess not. Yeah, we'll, we'll just extract him. Oh no, the minus 10 is gone. It's actually on Huang Zhong. Uh, let's hope the first recent event goes away soon. He's going to come back next turn. All these guys will drop to like, he'll be two points. Oh man, these positions. When can we hit Marquis? Not at the rate we're losing land. Um. I think they're getting baited back. I mean, they're both in the water. This looks tempting. Someone's gonna come, right? Okay, 
Can he beat this place? But not healed. And he's level five. The thing is, I can't get back in time. I guess we can at least be in striking range. See if that changes his mind. That's also going to time out soon. Ah, there are definitely a lot of causes for concerns. Yeah, all right, we're good. Um, there could be a few things we can pull here. I could make Sun Tzu look bad. Maybe that will fracture his relationship with these two who look good, especially if the Emperor condemns him. Alright, I think we leave things as is. The economy just doesn't look good right now. Become vassal of Sun Tzu until marriage, and then spring out from it? It's a possibility, but it's probably not a route I want to take. Alright, let's just go through this. I think it's fine. They might dip to four points. Actually, no, it'd be two points. Because the oh, that lack of her, he'll be four points, he'll be two points. It's just ridiculously low. It, it's really concerning. Anyways, let's go. He's so giving us that vassalage. Guarantee autonomy and also pay us. Hmm. No. Leo Belt needs food. He's not getting any from me. Bonzul seems to have another son in our faction. Maybe even more than one. Okay, he didn't get to get into the position. He's going to run, but I don't mind chasing. I could do the backspace trick, but it's fine. I'm actually going to move back closer to the tool maker. We'll see what he does. So we got Ma Xiu's army to move into a weird spot. Meng Huo went back, so we're safe. So we'll wipe him here and perhaps try to force a peace deal. Uh, let's do the fight first, and then all of the other stuff. I think we just delegate this. There's there's no one that we really want on that side. Protector Hu Pass. He's one of the generals that Guan Yu kills on the five passes to go back. Um, we're going to release both. But I need the money. Unity. Extra experience. We, we probably want to chase them down, actually. Oh, this is going to help us. Yu Jin skill tree. I assume it's good. It's decent. It's fine. I need that. Devastate their Nanyang holdings. Both of these are pretty bad. I'd rather they give me an option to improve my economy. Hmm. Let me see if I can trigger some other things by taking some other actions first. 
I don't think there's any particular blue one that we would need. Minus 10% character salary, that would actually help a bit. Plus 8 satisfaction for strategist, that would actually help a bit as well. Ultimately, this one will help a lot, but that's going to take this and this. Maybe that's what we want rather than just pick... But one army slot, I think it's going to be helpful too, and 5% movement. We'll get this first and then go for this 10 points of satisfaction and 10 points of diplomatic relations. Usually we'll never go that far, but since, you know, we have the tree set up like so. Okay, still 14. Huang Zhong, is he back? Not yet, preparing to return. Still undiscovered. We'll do hold firm. We'll, we'll give him the increase. Yeah, the, the recent event need to go. <laughs> hmm. There's another level up. Zhang Lu. Pick up some extra industry income. She's level 5, he's level 3. Zhao Yun probably should try to get on the field. Let's use that. We'll do the pursuit battle. She might die. Well, she will die, but... I don't really care about her. It's likely we capture again with that last wound. Or oh, she just got killed straight up. He doesn't have a siege weapon. I could just go this way as well. As long as I'm in the circle, I can, you know, join in the battle when he's sieging. I don't have to go all the way this way and go this way. I can sneak in here to disable most of his range when he siege. Not that he has many, but whatever amount he does have. He didn't get to go very far, but um, we'll see where he runs. Can't catch up to him now. Straight up kill a wounded character. Ah, we lost the plus 40, but we did change cer certain things here. It didn't become better, let's just say that. Can we do anything else to kind of alter this? Let's see. Um, us with Liu Bell, it's in a weird state. He picked up quite a few other characters. I think we'll still just do improve relations. Nobel should actually be super weak right now, shouldn't he? I wonder what his value is right now. Oh, I can't confederate someone in the Civil War. Right, that's not allowed. The Civil War must end before I can offer any sort of unification. He's not at war with his Civil War side. What if I ask him to help me fight Cao Cao? He's not very willing. Smart man. Okay. We have enough points to just peace out with him. The thing is, I still want Hun, the Hun territory. That's 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 the weird part. Because mm, Badung has a piece of the Hun territory. But to be fair, we're probably not going to get to it in a you know, in a while. And if we could get peace out from him, 
I don't mind fighting Lu Bu. It's a chance for us to capture people like Zhang Liao, but... Poison Chalice. Probably Li Ru's item. Poison's the Empress. Empress He. Alright, I think we're we're fine. We'll... The Herb bonus ends next turn. He's gonna ditch. We gotta give him a title. Just something to tide him over. This is also risky because like Huang Zhong could come back and they could have a problem. Right, this way we're not gonna have any red. At least for this turn. I don't want to kill Masio. Oh, finally income. Okay, we'll just get income. Positive. Big difference for us. Okay, alright, let's continue. It became negative. We'll fight Lu Bu's army and make it back to positive. Alright. Zuo Yuan. Thing is, she's in our court, so she's pretty happy. 28. Ouch. The recent event's still on, but I think now it's Huang Zhong's recent event. So hopefully it'll tide over pretty soon. Overturn Feather. Try to find his bow. Y'all try and ranked up. Probably gonna get patience first. 17, 18, 22. It's a nightmare. We need to get ourselves. It's because the the assignment timed out. Everyone lost 10 points. We need, we need to and Huang Zhong replaced the other 10 points so we didn't gain anything back. Uh, we need to get a concubine or something like that. All right, we'll take care of Tall Tall's problem first. I feel like if I'm here, I can't reinforce. Let's see. No, not true. What if we switch to March? I don't know if that helps. The idea is... Hmm. Because the way the river is... Like, we can get there next turn. If the city falls, we have to spend a turn sieging them, too. That's the annoying part. I can sneak here just to make their delegate a little bit more difficult. Gongbai is also leading an army, an all girls army. Lu Bu's official wife, Han Sui's daughter, supposedly Dong Zhuo's granddaughter. Ah, he's on March. We can pick him up. Ten percent capture. Not really worth an actual fight. It's decisive, anyways. It's gonna be ten percent regardless. All right, we're not healing in their land, anyways. So let's just get off their land. Less impactful on our supplies. And then move back towards fighting uh, Meng Huo. Wang Shi. Meng Huo's faction. Sun Jiao, we've seen him before. Tufa. Xian Bei, head of Tufa. Uh, 
Um, that later. Maybe he has some Senbei items. A Senbei horse. Mongol wall horse. Alright, we're not going to recruit anyone. Our economy simply does not allow it right now. And satisfaction is a nightmare to take care of right now. Getting sieged. Not developing that. Oh. We got options in Dom Domin's faction. No one has minus 10 anymore. I think it's safe to recall the ladies. I mean, I don't know why we want them, but they they served us a purpose for a while. Zhengjian is still part of the objective, but we need more unhappy people. Wait, Guo Hai? Isn't he a bit young to be here? We got ourselves some, I mean, I don't know why we're excited for him. We're not like Samayi. No, he's not willing to turn on them. Tianjin, maybe? No. Yeah, I don't know if we can get her. I mean, we can also ditch. But I think we'll take Liu Yao first, obviously, since he is unique. Yan Bai Hu, we would love to get. Liu Bu, will love to get. Xu Rong, I would like to keep. Just want to check him out, see how they made him. Li Jue, Zhang Liao. Zhang Fang, as in Zhang Yan's son, I guess. Gao Shun's also here. Some nomadic character. Jia Xu. Okay. How much defense do you have? Plus 15. Wow. Run the interference. And let's see who's naturally able to target. Drop caution to 8. Drop. Let's drop. Let's drop Yan Bai Hu to 9. These will clear and we'll get to see who is available then. Let's see how Cao Cao take care of this, whether he takes the city now or waits till next turn. Yeah, let's move on here. I don't think we can extract too much from diplomacy. Alright, let's go. Yuan Shao also declare war on us, that's fine. They're taking the temple. Oh no, 10 points of oh, satisfaction. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Okay. All right, so you guys should also declare war on us. We are getting schemed the same time. On Liu Bei. Can you actually, can you actually target Liu Bei? I mean, if he did, then obviously we win that Dark Crow. Another gold armor. Wow. Um, doesn't look like anyone dipped too badly. Okay, the minus 10 from recent event is gone. So, so Huang Zhong's disappeared as soon as we lost the temple. So that was a blessing or else we would have been in a very bad spot. I can put back the assignment. Or plus 10 points. Definitely need that. Buy us a little bit of time. Wu Tu Wu Confederate Mu Lu. He took Ba Dong. Ah, taking our income sources. Is he coming back for offense? Okay, so I actually think we should just end the episode here. Um, we'll come back. And we'll fight Cao Cao's army here to defend Jiangxia. Lu Bu is coming towards Huarongdao. We'll have to go back and retake that, unfortunately. 
We can counterattack Tall Tall a little bit here. Um, take back our farmland. That's probably the extent of the counterattack. Yeah, historically, Liu Bei has always been in a bad position, and that's what we're experiencing right now. The fact that we have a weird relationship with the Kingdom of Wu is making things a little bit difficult in terms of completing our territories. But we're patiently... When did this happen? Why is she 17 now? We missed out on our wife. Was it turned 77? Because 67 she was 14. Then it would have been 77. Oh, we misplayed it. Hmm. This becomes a lot more difficult here. What we can do is kill her husband? I mean, waiting for him to grow up is is not really a plan. She got married into Shixie's faction too. That's the weird part. That's like the difficult part for us to grab her, because now she's no longer in Sun Tzu's faction. And it's like he declared war on her right after marrying the sister. It's almost like what Sun Quan did to us. Okay, that is definitely a bit disappointing in terms of how that played out. Masio married, don't buy, okay. Lady Feng, widow of Yuan Shu, married Gong Sun Gong. Oh, he married the TUP version of Lady Zhou. Lady Xiaohou and Yuan Xi, Luo Jun's adopted in that family. Liu Qi is still alive. Zhang Yang's faction. Married Zhang Yang's daughter. Okay. Good thing he didn't die. We're trying to grab Liu Yao. Ma Chao's single. Okay, I think what we could do is adopt Liu Bao's daughters, steal Ma Chao from a marriage to complete our five tiger generals, and appoint an heir through adoption. Because it looks like the wife plan for Liu Bei is just not going to work, and we're going to have to just rely on the historical fact that Liu Bei doesn't really have a wife until he marries the widow Lady Wu who I don't think we'll find, but the heir will go to the sun, but we'll temporarily have someone be the backup plan for now so we can get some faction-wide bonuses so things don't look so dire. Yeah, that's pretty much the plan. The land's being grabbed. You know, Sun Tzu grabbed all of these, so we can't expand that way, nor do we want to. We are going to cut west. We're going to go through the Nanman forces. He's going to be on top of that. We're going to be defending in the north against all the forces. We'll send out a third army once our economy sort of allow it. Um, a, a real third army, not the burned officers. Um, it's going to probably be led by Zhao Yun. Who else can we really add in this? Zhuge Dan is going to come soon. So that would be someone we can add as well. Huang Zhong, right? Huang Zhong, Zhao Yun, Ma Chao. Ma Chao's a bit early. Huang Zhong, 206, also a bit early, but... Um, we could use them. Those would be the only ones that technically are ours. Yeah, we'll, we'll get out of this situation. Uh, just got to win a few fights, force a few peace, and continue from there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, and see you all next time. Bye!